Welcome back. In the last lecture, we learned to query fields from a single object and objects that are related to it. We learned how to use dot notation to move from a child up to a related parent object and we also learned to use subqueries to move from a parent down to a child. In this final lecture on circle, we'll dive deeper into aggregates, how to work with dates and times, and using advanced operators with wildcards. One of the cool things you can do with Sockle is to use it to calculate aggregate data. As Salesforce admins, we use aggregate data all the time when we create summary reports or roll up summary fields. The types of aggregate values we can calculate with Sockle are min, max, average, sum, count, and count distinct. Most of these are pretty straightforward, but count and count distinct could use a little more explanation. Count returns the number of rows within your query result. For example, if you were to run this query, select count from book, this would return a record count of 7, while count distinct with name would return only 6. This is because there is a duplicate record 0 to 1 which appears in the name field of two records. While keywords min, max, sum, and average are pretty self-explanatory, I think there are a few not so obvious ways to use them that are worth talking about. As you can imagine, min finds the lowest value and the max finds the highest, but this can be used not only with numbers, but also with dates, finding the earliest or the latest date. We can also use these keywords with text fields and pick lists for sorting and then finding first or last values. Sum and average can only be used with numeric fields. And as you can probably guess, sum can add field values together and average returns their average value. All of these functions require that you feed them a particular field. For example, this query is going to add up pages of all books in the object. Let me run this query that is 2,234 pages of reading pleasure. Group by keyword allows us to calculate aggregates that are grouped by particular values. Again, this is what we do when we create a summary report and using the drop zone. For example, maybe we wanted to count all our books and see how many we have in various genres. We could use the following circle query to summarize books by genre. Select genre count name from book group by genre. We have the number of books grouped by their genre. We can even use aggregates with filters using where. Perhaps we would like to count books grouped by genre that were quick to read, maybe less than 300 pages. Then we could use the following circle statement to pull this data. Select Genre, count name, from book, where number of pages less than 300, group by genre. Running this query has the following result. We just have two books, one in arts and the other one in science and technology, that are less than 300 pages. There's another way to filter circle aggregates, which allows us to calculate aggregates for records that fall within a certain criteria. For this, we can use the having keyword. While where filters records before they are aggregated, having filters records after they have been aggregated. Let's see it in action. Imagine we were only looking for book genres that were used by more than one book. Select genre count name from book group by genre having count name greater than 1. In plain English, this is saying group and count my books by genre and then show me only genres that have more than one book. Now let's move on to working with dates and date times. Dates and date times are always a little tricky to work with because they can be entered in so many ways, but Sockle accepts date in a certain format. If you were just working with the date March 27, 2015, it could be written in so many different ways. But the only acceptable format in Sockle is the third one. 
it's quite easy to remember year, month, and day. If you were dealing with date and time, like March 27, 2015, at 8.40 a.m. Pacific time, which one of these do you think is the correct format? This one is slightly tricky, but the acceptable format is the last one. It starts with year, month, day, and time in hours, minutes, seconds, and time zone offset, that is UTC-8 for Pacific time. But you might be wondering, what does this actually look like when we use it in Sockel? The following code is an example of how we can use date time in Sockel. If you wanted to look for records that were created between a particular date range, then you can use a combination of comparison operators. For example, select name, id, create date, from, book, where create a date, greater than certain date, and create a date, less than certain date. This will look for any book that was created between these dates. If you wanted to also include the books that were created on those dates, then you would want to change this to greater than or equal to, and this one to less than or equal to. The second way we can use dates is much easier and more dynamic. Because it doesn't require us to enter a particular date, but instead uses a placeholder for date ranges. These are called date literals and include options like yesterday, today, tomorrow, last week, this week, etc. We have the same function available to us when we create reports in the report builder and we can choose one of the standard date ranges. The great thing about this is that instead of having to update our query with new specific date range, we can feed it a placeholder which is always going to be relative to today. For example, say you want to run a query that pulls out all the books that were added this month if we use the date option with specific values, we would need to update the dates in the query each month, not so with date literals. You just use the placeholder of this month and you would never have to change it again, no matter what date it was. It would always pull out the entries created in whatever month you were in. Let's check out how super easy date literals are to use. The following query is pulling out any books that were added in the last week. We can also use the last n days, where n is a number. For example, if I wanted to pull out all the books that have been created in the last 60 days, then it would look like this, where created date equals last n days, colon 60. Running this query has the following result. I have talked about some of the options for date literals, but there are a lot more. It's quite easy to remember them based on the naming convention. Let's move on to some other cool stuff like the wildcards. Like is a very special operator because it can be used along with wildcards when we don't quite know what we are looking for in a text string. Remember back in our first Sockle lecture where we looked at finding all those contacts whose last name is Smith, but we also wanted to include all those whose last name was Smith with a Y. That query looked like this. We said that there was another way to write this query using the in keyword. And we also said that there was another way to query Salesforce and look for the same records using the like keyword. This does the same thing. The underscore inside the single quotes basically says, replace me with any single character. So it would find Smith with a Y, and Smith with an I, and also others. Let's see some other use cases that are super awesome. What if you wanted to find all accounts whose first name starts with the letter S? Super simple. Select name, ID, from account, where, name, like, S, with a percentage sign. The query would result in the following records. It contains all the records whose first name starts with the letter S. If we change this, this query would fetch records whose name ends with S. And this one would find any account whose name contains S. We are almost at the end of our introduction to Sockle, 
But before we do one final wrap up, I made a promise in my first lecture that I would talk about how SQL differs from SQL. So here we go. For those of you who are already familiar with SQL, you'll find SQL easy. But there are a few things that might trip you up. Let's talk about them. Unlike in SQL, you can't modify data with SQL. You can only retrieve it. In force.com coding, we use DML to programmatically modify data. We talked a little bit about this in my S object lecture. In SQL, we use dot notation directly in the select statement to pull data from related objects rather than creating official join statement as we would in SQL. In SQL, where clauses searches that use the like keyword are not case sensitive. There are some other more subtle differences, but for the most part, SQL and SQL are pretty alike. You have made it through all the three lectures on SQL and I'm glad you survived. By now, you'll have all you need to get started with SQL. This isn't everything we could talk about, but this is definitely enough for you to get your feet wet. I hope that you have gotten some helpful tips and tricks. Let's do one final wrap up of what we learned about SQL. SQL is used to pull data out of Salesforce objects, also known as querying the database. Like Apex for the most part, SQL is not case sensitive. There are only two required keywords for every SQL statement, select and from. Select lets you pick which fields do you want to pull data from. From lets you pick what object you're pulling from. There are a number of optional keywords like limit, order by, and where. Limit lets you control how many records you want to pull. Order by lets you control the sort order, ascending or descending. If you don't specify the order, SQL would assume ascending. Where lets you specify how you want to filter the results. And within a where clause, you can use number of operators including equals, not equals, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. Like is used to filter for text strings and can be used with the percentage and underscore wildcards. In is used to filter by a comma separated list of values. And is used to combine multiple filters. Both sides of and must be true. Or is also used to combine multiple filters where only one side of the or needs to be true. We can select to query fields from a single object and any objects that are related to it. We can use dot notation to move from a child up to a parent object and we can use subqueries to move from a parent down to a child. We can also create roll up like aggregate queries that can include sum, average, min, max, count and count distinct. Group by lets you create summary report like data results, where lets you filter records before they are aggregated, having lets you filter aggregates after they have been aggregated. We can filter date date time fields using either exact dates or date literals. This is massive. Good job. In the next lecture, we'll talk about SOSIL, in short for Salesforce Object Search Language.